he's a laird or something, and he's looking for a wife. No, he doesn't want yours, Phil. He wants one that ain't you. Well, anyhow, he just walked in here and he grabbed some of my coffee without asking. I'll talk to you later. Well, hi, honey. How was school? Fine. Ernie wanted me to tell you that he was eating over at a friend's house. And that if I didn't tell you, he'd croak me. Did he say what friend? No. All he said was that his friend had a neat sister and that he'd call you later. Okay. I want you to change your clothes and hang this dress up, okay? Okay. All right. How come Uncle Charlie's being so nice to Mr. Douglas? Uncle Charlie's being nice to Fergus? Yeah. When I was coming through the kitchen just now, he said he was a nice man. Hmm. Aren't you going to listen at the door? Oh, it's not nice to listen at doors. <laughs> you know, Fergus, you got the worst accent I've ever heard. But I'm willing to help you out. Now, man to man, what kind of a woman are you looking for? Woman? You're looking for a woman to make into Lady Douglas, ain't you? Aye. Well, what are you looking for? Old, young, tall, fat, thin, plain, fancy, what? I don't know till I see her. Oh, then you're not fussy, huh? <laughs> I'm no fussy. But I'm very selective. <laughs> well, I must post these. And I must say the price you pay for stamps in this country would beggar a baron. Yeah. Good day to you, Charles. Well, look, if I dig up a few dames for you, will you look them over? Aye. Aye. I'm Terry Dowling. Uh, uh, how do you do? Uh, I'm Mr. Douglas. You're Mr. Douglas? Yes. <laughs> hey, you gotta you know, forgive the way I look. I just got off of work. I see. Jonas Tevern sent me. Jonas? D do you want to look me over here, or do you want me to sit down? W well, of, of course. Uh, come in. <laughs> Miss Dowling. I I'm afraid there's been some sort of mistake. Didn't Jonas call you? No. Isn't that just like a musician? He was supposed to call you and let you know I was coming. I work at the Blueberry Lanes. The Blueberry Lanes? It's a bowling alley. I work as a cocktail waitress there. Oh, before you say anything, and before you think I'm some kind of a weirdo, I have been married before. Ralph and me was too young, you know what I mean? What does a kid 16 years old know about marriage? But here I am, a little bit older and a little bit wiser. I don't think my cargo has shifted too much, do you? Cargo? My shape. Oh, uh, well, no, no. Listen, I'm 34 years old. I'm not going to kid you about that. You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? <laughs> no, I I'm afraid I don't really. Uh... Aren't you the one who wants to get married and take the wife to Norway or someplace? <laughs> no, uh, that's my cousin. And it's Scotland. What difference does it make, right? Where's your cousin? Uh, he's gone to bed. He, he goes to bed quite early. Sure does. <laughs> well, okay. Tell him I'm at the lanes from 3 until about now. I have tables 8, 10, and 11. On Thursdays, I take over table 3, too, okay? Miss Dowling, uh, who did you say sent you? Like I said, Jonas Tevron. Uh. Naturally, you've never heard of him either. Boy, this is the most bollocks blind date I've ever been on. Well, you know how trumpet players are. They blow all that racket through their mouths. Some of it's bound to get back in the brain. <laughs> Come and see us sometime. I cheated. I just heated it up. Who is at the door? Well, Barbara, uh, you just wouldn't believe it. <laughs> came by last night, and she... Do you know a musician by the name of Jonas Tevron? No. Why? Well, this Jonas Tevron sent over a young woman, and Steve talked to her. I mean, she was already... She came to the house? 
I was making coffee, and I'm just sick that I missed her because Steve isn't very good at descriptions. Well, what did she look like? Well, he said that she was rather youngish looking and that she wore a uh, waitress's outfit, and he said something about her cargo not having shifted too badly. <laughs> Men always remember the wrong things. Now, who would tell people about Fergus? I don't know. I don't know. I asked Dodie, and I asked Ernie, and... <laughs> I think I've been asking the wrong people. Hi. Oh. Hi. Charlie. Jumping in the lounge down at the bowling alley. And did you tell him that Fergus was looking for a wife? Why not? Did Jonas send somebody over? Oh, Charlie, how could you? Uncle Charlie, really, that's going a little too far. Come on, hold it, hold it, you two. Old Fungus is looking for a wife, ain't he? Well, that's not the way to go about it. Ah, oh, horse feathers. Look, if the guy wants to get married, you tell people about it. It's like sticking out honey for flies. <laughs> uh, Uncle Charlie, uh, maybe Fergus wants to pick out his own bride. A young woman came by here last night expecting to be considered as an applicant. I mean, she went to lots of trouble. She had hopes, maybe. And she got nothing for all her pains. I mean, you just can't treat people like that. Well, who talked to her? Steve did. Did he turn her down? Well, it's not a matter of turning her down. He didn't even know what she was here for. <laughs> then he's dumber than I think he is. Uncle <laughs> Charlie, I, I mean, it's, it, you can't just put a, an ad in the paper about a thing like this. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, no, you can't, Charlie. I mean, after all, this is Ferguson. <laughs> Charlie, you did. <laughs> well, not in the big papers. In that little throwaway that we get on Tuesdays. Charlie. Hello? A neighborhood news? Well, this is Mrs. Stevens. I know everyone in the neighborhood takes your paper. <laughs> the point is, is, is that I want to put a stop to an ad. It, that appears... You no, know, not next week. This week. Look, I, I don't understand your routine about putting a paper to bed. But what, what I'm trying to say is... Barbara, forget it. Here it is. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry I bothered you. Oh, no. Laird Douglas of Scotland wishes to meet suitable woman. Object matrimony. Which will make her Lady Douglas. The first bit of wording. <laughs> Oh, Katie, do you know what this means? There's going to be armies of women at that door. Are you the folks looking for a lady to marry a lad? I don't want you to be upset, but something terrible has happened. Is that so? Charlie, who meant well, I, I want you to understand that. He put an ad in the paper about you wanting a bride. Uh, in the newspaper, you say? Well, it's just a throwaway paper we get on Tuesdays. Uh, some advertising for the neighborhood. I mean, it's not the one we really subscribe to. Barbara. But that isn't the point. Fergus, some of the results from that ad are waiting for you in the living room. Prospective brides? Aye. Well... <laughs> He's a better man than I thought. <laughs> uh, do you know, see? He kens the problem, and he seeks to assist. Well, I'm glad you're taking it that way. I, uh, Barbara, I shall need a, a pencil and paper if you, uh, if you have a mind to supply it. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Are you going to take notes? I am afraid I didn't have the memory for the statistics of women. <laughs> Not only that, I'll be wanting bairns. Boy bairns. Uh, mister, I never took a foreign language, so I don't understand one word you're saying. It is not a foreign language, madam. Well, I'll be thanking you for your time. Good evening to you. You mean that's it? 
You want me to go? I. 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 Uh, you may go. <sighs> I, I don't know what it is you're looking for, honey, but I'm certainly glad I'm not it. I, I, I'm too old to learn a new language. Good evening. Are they gone, Fergus? Aye. Not a sheep in the pasture. Not a sheep? That is the saying we have. Oh. Barbara, where am I going to find myself a wife to give me bairns? Fergus, you're a big, strong, handsome man. Well, that isn't really important. What is, is... I'm going to be corny, okay? Corny? Uh-huh. I didn't get the meaning of the word. Well, you'll see. Fergus, finding a wife to give you barons is the wrong approach. You have to find... Well, this is the corny part. It's a woman you love. Love? Love. I mean, you never have once mentioned that word. Well, uh, you cannot love someone you have not met. <laughs> well, that's true, but... You have to start thinking differently and stop thinking about bloodlines and statistics and start looking at the woman. Well, uh, when Steve comes home, tell him I'm upstairs working on a dress for Dodie. Aye. Hi, it's you again. It's a groovy suit. So I'll tell you why I came and then I'll be on my way. I'm interested in your cousin, sure. I'd like to be Lady Douglas and I'd like to go to Scotland, but I got the feeling last night you thought I was some sort of a creep. Just because a trumpet player tells me that some guy's in the market for a wife, I don't usually just go and jump in his lap. I figured we'd meet and look each other over, and if it worked out, well, I'd still like to meet him. That's why I got into this dress. But I just don't want you folks to think that Terry Dowling is some sort of a... Creep? <laughs> Whatever that may be. <laughs> Miss Dowling. I didn't ken you were here last night. Had I known, I would have, uh... Wait a minute. You're the cousin. Stephen's cousin, I. Oh, you could be twins. I didn't see the resemblance. He has a very weak chin. <laughs> Miss uh, Dowling, would you no care for a cup of tea? Tea? Aye. Sure. Yes, Janet. Oh, fine. Uh, send him in. Hmm? Ah, Stephen, I seek your advice. Well, Fergus, I hope I can come up with some answers. You can the matter of the newspaper advertisement. Uh, yes, Fergus. Uh, Barbara said not too much came of it. Uh, no. But later in the evening, I encountered a young woman. She says she knows you. Oh? She gives her name as Terry Dowling. Terry, uh... Oh, yes, yeah, she's the, uh... Girl who was sent over by the trumpet player. Aye. Well, uh, Fergus, uh, not that I have anything against trumpet players, but uh, that's not really the way to meet a girl, do you think? Well, I uh, haven't given it much thought. Are you telling me you're interested in her? Aye. Uh, when she left it, uh, it came over me. Uh, what came over you? That I uh, wanted to see her again. Uh, do you find that strange in a man of my age? Well, no, no, not at all, Fergus, but, uh... I find her to be pleasant to look upon. I find her not beyond the age of having barons. And I find her to be of cheerful countenance. And, uh, one other thing of major import, Stephen. Uh, what's that, Fergus? Her, uh, 
cargo hasn't a ship. I hear that Fergus turned down every one of them dames that I sent over from the ad. Yes, he did, Charlie. Well, who does he think he is? He thinks he's the one who's going to do the marrying. That <laughs> ad cost me 12 cents a word. I know. And Fergus was very touched that you went to so much trouble to help him out. Help him out, my aunt's bustle. <laughs> I'd do anything to get rid of that scotch nut in this house. Oh, Charlie. Uh. Hiya, Steve. Hiya, Charlie. Hi, honey. Steve, he's leaving. Fergus? He must have heard what we were talking about in the hallway. I can't make him listen to reason. Well, what did you say in the hallway? I told Barbara I'd do anything to get rid of him. That's why I put the ad in the paper. By the tone of your voice, I guess you still mean it, huh? You ain't just whistling Dixie. Well, I guess that's it, honey. Fergus is just very hurt. But he's a grown man. You can't very well pamper him. Anything to eat in the kitchen? Hey, Steve, you trying to put me in wrong? You know, walking out of me ain't gonna do it. If the guy wants to leave, that's great with Charlie O'Casey. Are you going away, Uncle Fergus? I, uh... Uncle Fergus, hmm? Yeah. It's better than Mr. Douglas, okay? Okay, Lassie. I used to didn't like you, but now I like you. So why don't you stay? I, uh, cannot stay. Do you want to marry me, Uncle Fergus? <laughs> marry you? Yeah. Mommy says you want a wife to take to Scotland. But right now, I'm not allowed to go past Buchanan Street. <laughs> Dordie, uh, you'd better run along now. There's a good wheel, I see. You heard him, honey. Get going. Okay. Uh -huh. See you guys. Uh -huh. Look, if you think that I came up here to apologize, why, just forget it. An Irish apology is writ upon the wind. Oh, sure. Big deal, writ upon the wind. <laughs> I'm saying this. If you're too chicken to stay here, then go ahead and get lost. Chicken? Cowardly. Now, I don't like you. We all know that. But them folks down there, they do. And? So if you're too chicken to stay in a house with a guy that can't stand you, and that's me, then take your yellow streak and get out. Have you had your say? I've had my say. Then I'll have mine. I detest your very bones, O Casey, dear. Ken not. Right. And the Irish swagger of you is worse than the sway of a jackass staggering down a rutty road, you can not. I can the whole bit. You also can the fact we are both Gaelic would twirl my grandfather in his crypt. Old swirling Fergus doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> and knowing all that, you'd still have me in the same house with you. Sure. But let's get one thing straight. If I ever catch you wearing a skirt, you're in big trouble. Psychologically, it was a bad move, Dad. But they should have a third party present. Somebody with an open mind. How long have they been up there? Not long. Boy, Boy it's neat. Uh, what's neat, Dodie? First, Uncle Charlie says rotten junk to Uncle Fergus. Then Uncle Fergus says rotten junk to Uncle Charlie. <laughs> It's better than listen to, to the teacher bawling out kids in class. <laughs> well, beside the point that you're not supposed to be listening at all, what are they saying? Well, first Uncle Charlie said he was chicken and had a yellow steak. Streak. Yeah. And then Uncle Charlie had terrible bones and walked funny. <laughs> are you sure, Dodie? Yeah, I think so. Fergus says keen a lot, junk. <laughs> Honey, maybe you better interfere. Yeah. Well, I guess I'm going to have to. I just thought these two grown men... I'll take you down to the Blueberry Lanes, all right. But if you get out of line with Terry just once, you'll get a thick ear. You don't threaten me, Charles. I'm afraid you didn't have the physical muscle to make good. Oh, 
all right. I'm taking this scotch highball down to the lanes. Stephen, very soon you must instruct me in driving a motor car. I'm at the mercy of this elderly Irish leprechaun the while. <laughs> How can a grown man live as long as you have without learning to drive? I'll see you later. Yell at each other, Daddy. Well, Dodie, I guess sometimes it's easier than shaking hands. <laughs> mother, no, no, Mother, you're getting it wrong. Fergus is Steve's cousin from Scotland. His first cousin. Actually, Laird Douglas of Scythian Bridge. No, 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 it's, it's a little village. Anyway, I wish you were in town because you have never seen two men look so much alike. Hi, Fergus. If you don't think I went through the ringer trying to get a sub for tonight, whoops. I blew it again, Russ. I'm afraid you did, Miss Dowling. Uh, Fergus is still upstairs dressing. Well, you want me to sit down, or is Fergus almost ready? Oh, of course. Uh, sit down. He should be down in a minute. You don't like me, do you? Well, uh, why, why would you say a thing like that? It shows. See, I look at it this way. You got a bad first impression, right? I mean, Charlie's friend tells me that Fergus is in the market for a wife, and I pop over here like I got no pride. Uh, would you care for some coffee, Miss Dollar? I think it's still hot. No. See, I don't blame you for not liking me. I'm a waitress in a bowling alley. I talk too much, and I ain't exactly Lady Beard of Ears. Oh, no, you're, uh, you're fine. Look, don't be embarrassed. My mother used to say, God gave you a mouth to eat and talk with. Eating makes you fat. Talking makes your friends. You my friend, Mr. Douglas? I, uh... Well, of, of course. Uh, then don't get hacked at me for dating Fergus. I think he's a doll. Honest. Fergus will be right down. We must see Terry. I'm, uh, I'm Barbara Douglas. Hi, Barbara. And this is our daughter-in-law, Katie. Fergus probably told you about her. Uh, well, no, Fergus isn't too gabby. Hi, Katie. Hi. I was just telling Steve here, you folks have no worries about Fergus and me. Worries? Well, let's face it, I come barging over here like I've been flung out of a catapult as soon as I hear there's a bachelor available, right? Well, no. No, it's true. But then I met him. And we had that silly tea right here in this room. And it was nice. What I'm trying to say is, He's too nice a guy for any woman to get her hooks into, and that includes me. Well, here we come, ready or not. Terry, this is the best we can do with the materials at hand. I, uh, wore my own tie. <laughs> what do you think? He'll do. Hi, Scotty. Uh, good evening to you, Miss Dowling. Come on, I'm gonna show you the sight. Bye, all. <laughs> You know, I, I think Terry's a, a nice girl. A, a really nice girl. Sure she is. A little rough around the edges, maybe, but uh, Terry is a good egg. Mm -hmm. You know what impressed me? Was her honesty, her lack of pretense. As if she sensed that we were concerned about it. Uh-oh. Somebody doesn't agree. No. Tea. Fergus and I have this thing about tea. Do I call you Lord Fergus? No. Then why do you call me Miss Dowling? I cannot get the swing of your first name on such a short acquaintance. Okay. Let it come out when it's more natural. That's my table over there. And that one, and that one. And on Thursdays, when Magda has her day off, that one over in the corner. They're, uh, muckle-fine tables, Miss Dowling. Muckle-fine? Aye. You know, I never noticed it before, but now that you mention it, they are muckle-fine. <laughs> Here we are. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Shall I pour? Aye.
Are you enjoying the book? Yeah. You're afraid he's going to do something foolish and pop the question tonight, aren't you? And you've decided that Terry doesn't have very good grammar and that she's a little over-friendly, right? And that Fergus may just be a babe in the woods with a girl like that. Well, you want to know what I think? I thought you would. Well, I think that Fergus is very lucky to have a lusty, honest girl like Terry instead of one of these sidey dolls that has a lot of manners and no insides. That's what I think. Good night. I want to thank you for a marvelous conversation. Really, very fulfilling. <laughs> Well, here we are. Uh, what do they call this place? <laughs> Neckingbird Lane. Neckingbird Lane? Oh, it's just a silly name. I thought you might like to see it. Uh, uh it is Bonnie. <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, Fergus, it's supposed to be romantic. See all the other cars? I... Well, now you've seen it, let's go. Uh, no. Not is a pleasant weekend. Uh, Terry. You said it. You finally said Terry. I, as that English writer puts it, uh, it rolls trippingly on the tongue. English writer, you mean Shakespeare? I, uh, of course, he, uh, cannot compare with Robbie Burns, but, uh, he does have a flair for words. Terry, I, uh, I will show you something. Beautiful. Do you consider it so? Oh, sure. No. No, Fergus, look, if you have any weird ideas of giving this to me, it's just plain no. To the family crest. Well, that's swell. You've, you've got a great ring there, Fergus. Now you keep it. I, I, I know. I came running over when I thought you were available, but I've changed my mind. You can my meaning? I... I can your meaning. Well, they're home. Fergus, don't just sit there like a loner. It, it's, it's not that I don't like you. I cannot. Will you stop, Ken, and start listening to me? We had a cup of tea a few days ago, and, and then this day tonight. Now that's it. That's the entire relationship. But you can't give me a ring on such short notice. I did not give you a ring. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, I... <laughs> I assumed that you wanted me to be Lady Douglas, and, and, and you were handing me the family ring as a sort of... How dumb can you get? Dumb is akin to stupid, Terry. You're no stupid. You're a wee person with a lovely face. I fancy you heavily. You fancy me heavily? I... Are you saying you love me? I... But how can you? It is not difficult. I sort of fancy you heavily myself, Fergus. I'm gonna kiss you. But it's just a kiss, I... 
And I don't want the ring, and I don't want any real estate. Okay? I... I found that to be a most satisfactory. Carrie's night off, didn't you know? Uh, yes, I know that. Uh, but I'm not who you think I am. You don't talk like him. I'm his cousin. You could have come out of the same egg. <laughs> I wonder if I could talk to uh, Jonas Tavern, is it? Sure, I'll get him. Have a seat, anywhere. Uh, thanks. Uh, the booth, all right? Yeah. I seem Siamese twins don't look more alike. <laughs> Second booth. Hi, you the cat wanted to see me? Oh, uh, yes. You okay if I sit down? Oh, well, sure. Yeah. Last time I left my horn on the stand, some guy pawned it. <laughs> now, what can I do for you? Well, I, uh, I'm Charlie O'Casey's nephew. Yeah, he was uh, telling me about some cat from Scotland uh, looking for a wife. I know. You know a lot. Give me the downbeat. The downbeat? Yeah, yeah. what do you want from me? Well, I was wondering uh, what you could tell me about Miss Dowling. Why? Well, you see, the uh, man from Scotland who wants the wife uh, happens to be my cousin. And uh, I believe he's interested in Miss Dowling. Oh, well, well, Terry's a good kid. I mean, a, a really good kid. That first marriage of hers was nobody's fault, right? I mean, they were both babies. Uh, you say uh, first marriage. Uh, she's been... Married uh, twice? Yeah, yeah. Anybody 37 years old that ain't been married twice has got to be a real B-flat dog. <laughs> She's uh, 37. Plus, she's an Aquarius. Hey, here she is now. You can ask her yourself, fella. I got a set to play. Hey, Terry. Hi, Jonas. Uh, somebody here to see you. I just got my check. I was going to come pick you up. You again. Doing a little snooping, Mr. Douglas? I'm afraid you might call it that, Miss Dowling. And there's so much against my nature that I can hardly believe I'm here. But that's not the point. What is the point? The point is, I think I have a relative who is being taken advantage of. You think so? Yes. And if I'm wrong, I'll, I'll apologize. Now, for one thing, I understand you're... Uh, not 34, as you told him and me. You're at least 37. Well, isn't that a little trivial? What woman you know tells her right age? Well, I suppose that's true, but in this case, it happens to be important. Fergus wants heirs. For another thing, I understand you've been married twice, not once. Okay. I'm 37, and I've been married twice. And I've been arrested once. And I will be Lady Douglas soon. There's nothing you can do to change that. So I see. Arrested for what? I don't know that. You know, Barbara, now that I've found my suspicions are right, I... Uh, I don't seem to find much satisfaction in it. Is Fergus getting dressed to go out? Oh, he's been dressed for ages. She should have been here an hour ago. Maybe you talked her out of it. I'm not even sure that's a good thing. Here, Daddy. Uh, what's this? We want to take your picture. Oh, honey, look, I don't think your daddy's in any mood for anything like this. Well, it's just a little test I'm running. Now, I say, if Dad puts on Uncle Fergus's hat and jacket and I take a picture, and if I take a picture of Uncle Fergus in Dad's suit, nobody could tell him apart. Yeah, but I don't think your father would be like this. No, it's, it's okay, Barbara. Oh, thanks, Dan. And my mind might get it in the school paper. And I'll make you another bet. Even you couldn't tell him apart if you weren't in on it. You know, I, 
I want to see one of those pictures because personally I don't think there's that much resemblance. But put on the hat too. Okay. Say cheese, Daddy. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't say cheese. Okay. Come on, come on, you two. Upstairs. My three sons will return in a moment here on Odyssey. Sometimes I wonder why I care so much. But Terry, well, come on in. Mama, come here. Well, uh, I'll be right down. Please, come on in. Stay right there, because I'm going to make a speech. You stay right there, and, and don't you say one word until I've finished. I've been driving round and round thinking. I finally come to a conclusion. If you say anything, I'm walking right out this door. Number one, I'm a lady. So I could never be Lady Douglas. Number two, I lied to you about my age. I'm 37 years old, so maybe it wouldn't be so easy to have all those little bands you're always talking about. Number three, I've been married twice. My second husband was killed overseas, and I loved him. Number four, I was arrested once. They call it vagrancy. That means you get picked up for sleeping on a park bench. Hearts and flowers are over, Scotty. I think I love you. But I'm not even sure of that yet. I'm leaving this here. No, I, I said please stay where you are, because I, I can't think too straight with your clothes. Terry? I'm afraid you've done it again. And you just let me stand there and spill my insides out, right? <laughs> you told me not to say anything, remember? That's because I thought you were him. What are you doing in his hat and coat, trying to make some kind of a dummy out of me? Oh, the, uh, the kids just wanted to take a picture. Put the ring back on. Why? Because I think you will make the best Lady Douglas Scythian Bridge has ever seen. Put it back on. Put it on. Hi, I thought I heard you down here. I'm sorry, I, uh, I took a wee nap and I woke up to find myself sleeping. <laughs> you will forgive me, will you know, Terry? It's gonna knock you out the way he says, Terry. I'm sorry I'm late, Fergus. I had some thinking to do. Oh, we have a saying. The wee lass we are worried comes finally to the heather on the heath. With a man grown all the better for it, for he has his head upon her lap. Do they all talk like that in Scotland? Some are even hard to understand. Oh, it's going to be weird. Come on, doll. We're going to an Italian restaurant and listen to the accents clash. <laughs> See? That was one of the most romantic things I ever heard. What was? Well, the way Terry came in and told you the truth about herself and the way she thought you were Fergus and the way you made her take that ring back. You heard, huh? Oh, yes. Well, I'm Steve, you, you never tell me anything. Look, uh, Barbara, what you heard tonight stays right in this room, okay? What do you think I am, a gossip? Yes. <laughs> well, I only dispense information to a select few. But not this time, okay? Okay. Katie knows. No. Well, she just happened to be listening, too. <sighs> Honey, you can't expect two healthy females to ignore something like this. No, I guess not. 
Oh, boy. <laughs> they sanded the stupid bowling alleys again, and my high score was 119. Well, what's been going on around here? Well, uh, not too much, Charlie. Mm, that's right. Fergus just got Terry, that's about it. Oh, then you guys don't know. Don't know what? Oh, now, you guys both know that I'm no gossip, right? Now, that goes without saying. Oh, of course, that goes without saying, Charlie. Well, now, listen to this. I bumped into Fergus and Terry outside, and he gave her a ring. <laughs> he did. He sure did. <laughs> that big gold one with the crest on it. No. You know, you guys don't keep your eyes open. That's why you never know anything. <laughs> anyway, she's going to be Lady Douglas, and he's going to take her back. Maybe even get married right here in this house. <laughs> no. no.